I've noticed I do that a lot on my lives. I go through and I watch through my lives and stuff after I'm done, and I really, I've noticed a trend where I go, or I bobblehead it. So, uh, what is up, everybody? Happy, um, happy for uh, you guys having an awesome Friday. Sorry, I'm looking at my phone. I'm just wanting to. I was I had an idea last second to add to this, so I'm shuffling, uh, scrambling to get it. Um, so I'm just pulling this up on my phone. Okay, what's up, Lance? How the heck are you, dude? Um, happy Friday. <laughs> and um, so this uh, today is has been a fun day. Um, Liesel got home. She was on working on a movie set last night, doing background acting. Um, she got home late last night. And then Alex spent the day on set today um, with Liesl. I got to go up, excuse me, and pick him up as he wrapped and he made $100. He got a crisp $100 bill, handed to him at wrap, um, and he was pretty excited about that. And he got to be in a movie, right? Um, it's funny, Utah has become Hallmark, the Hallmark Channel. You know how they do 5 million 200,422 um, <laughs> Facebook or... <laughs> Christmas movies uh, every year. Um, Utah has become the production hub for Hallmark Christmas movies. Um, they're the one that... So it's June. It's 80 degrees outside, but everyone's pretending as though it's a freezing cold winter wearing coats. One of the kids actually passed out on set today because he got so hot. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. But in Utah, there are two Christmas movies that I know of filming right now in 80 degree weather in Utah. That's just crazy, right? Um, but anyway, it was fun to kind of be a little bit, I didn't get to go on set, I was just close, but being around it a little, again just brought back the flood of memories of those days when I was working in film and it was a lot of fun. Um, but, um, you know, it, it was just it was just fun and Liesl's on set again today, she will get home late tonight uh, and, and all that stuff. You know, I I, uh, I got home from, I went to lunch with a good old friend, um, uh, Anthony Darling. Uh, we played music together for a couple of years, uh, and we just were catching up because it had been a couple of years, or over a year since we had uh, visited and stuff. So it was good catching up with him. I tested my sprinklers because uh, my lawn is burning up. Um, I cut it a little too short, um, and so it's browning out a little bit, so... Testing the sprinklers tonight to see if the little, you know, timer thing works and all that stuff. It's just been a fun day. But I want to talk about, um, yes, Lance, we are a family of movie stars. That is no doubt. Um, but today I want to talk about how, how success works and how sometimes success or we can ha succeed in something kind of by chance or by luck. But when we have... Um, lasting success there are things that are done differently that make it lasting so that's what we're gonna jump on and talk about today let's see who's on Lance and Bob what's up dad oh, I'm excited to hang out with you uh, tomorrow have some brats and good stuff so um, let's go ahead and get started shall we All right, happy Friday night. I, I'm doing this, this is a late one again, just the things during the day, and I was driving during the usual afternoon slot when I do these, um, and so, you know, we're getting the late night Friday night, better late than never, right? Um, and I just wanted to first, everyone who was on yesterday, thank you for all the comments and everything. It was a super fun uh, live last night. If you missed it, go back and watch it, um, uh, but it was it was super fun. But um, today we are talking about um, how sometimes you can have success or succeed in something kind of by luck or by chance, having something fall into your lap, right? Um, but then the, uh, there's a difference between having that kind of luck success and having lasting success. And I want to talk about the differences between the two. Sound cool? So, so that's, that's what I want to talk about. And first... Uh, before I dive in again, I just want to give Lance a shout out. 
He uh, did a Facebook he, a Facebook video earlier today, tagged me in it, um, and he got a testimonial right there from somebody who, uh, you know, uh, got a tankless uh, water heater installed and just like said nothing but great things about Aspen Mountain and uh, how great the process was and how great the product was. And again, if you guys are not getting testimonial videos and having the people that you serve and who have uh, got results from you talk about how great you are, you need to be doing it. So kudos to Lance, you are the man. And then also to A.A. Ron, he did a live earlier today. I haven't got a chance to go watch through all of it, but I, from the comments and the things that I saw, it looks awesome. Um, again, I just want to give you guys the shout outs and the props for being uh, action takers and getting stuff done. So good on you guys, um, super cool. What's up, Josh? Good to have you on, buddy. Um, so, Today we're talking about success, right? And uh, how sometimes we can stumble upon it. Um, and sometimes uh, when, if we want it to last, how we have to do things differently than how we discovered it, right? So um, this is something that I have been thinking a lot about, right? Last year was the most successful I have been uh, in my business, right? Um, not only just in like dollars earned through revenue, but through impact, through relationships, all of that kind of stuff. It was just like a whole new level that I'd never had before, right? Um, let's see. I need... Yes, Dad, you do need to get back online. I know you're, you're fighting it, but it's good. It, it's, it's a good thing, I promise. Um, and when you do it with purpose and intent. And we can talk about that tomorrow. Um, <laughs> but... Last year, again, I had such success and it was awesome. And one, it was online, right? Um, dad, um, it was online and it was because I did things intentionally, but also I gave and I served and I shared my stories and all those kinds of things, right? Um, and there were a couple of things that happened last year that kind of fell, fell into my lap. Success that I stumbled upon or came into by chance, right? And when I, this is what I mean by chance. Like, I don't mean like some totally random something, but like, um, you know, there's a phrase, there's a, a cliche saying like, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Um, and I don't really like that phrase, but at the same time, it's true. Like when you work and you're putting yourself out there and doing things, opportunities come, right? And um, so I wanna share just a little story of something that I experienced um, last year and what I did to make that a lasting success. Um, and then uh, I want to, I have an example of something that's fun. We'll get a chuckle out of it. Some of you have already seen this. Some of you haven't, but um, it kind of shows the other side of having some success, but it not lasting. Okay. So um, what is up? A hey, hey, Ron, it is a Friday night party and uh, Tony, what's up, dude? Thanks for hopping on, you guys. So, this is this is uh, my story. So, some of you know this, some of you don't. Um, but again, it's worth sharing. So, last year, um, I talked about last night how I, you know, got into a coaching program and all this stuff, and um, I just fell in love with the community. It was just an amazing family feel. I met some amazing people and it was great for me to realize I wasn't alone, right? I wasn't crazy for wanting to create my own business and do things with uh, wanting to help people and, and make money as opposed to just make money regardless of what that means or what it takes to do it, right? And um, I quickly became like a, a celebrity is not the right word, but like a figure in that group. I was meeting and I was getting on calls with lots of people. I was talking to people all the time um, and helping people and serving and sharing my stories and, and, and all of these things and it was fun and I made a lot of amazing friends. I got some great clients out of it as well um, and it was really cool. Now, fast forward, that started in April of 2018. Fast forward to October, okay? And um, what's up, Tony? Um, and so, Fast forward to October and there was an event happening uh, in Phoenix, Arizona uh, for the Two Comma Club X coaching and Russell Brunson was going to be there and he's a friend of mine uh, since we were kids um, and he owns this he owns this company called ClickFunnels that runs this coaching program that I'm in, right? 
And um, so I get to Phoenix. I was sharing a house in Airbnb with my buddy Elias, with Krista and Ed, and with Vince Trujillo. And um, it was just a lot of fun, right? We got to town. We all got settled. We went to a networking event, you know, just reconnecting with people, um, meeting new people and, and everything. It was super awesome. And I remember that night um, we were leaving and uh, we were going home. We went to like a, I think it was like a CVS or something like that, just to grab some snacks and stuff for the night. So yeah, everything. And I got a Voxer message from Russell. And he asked me, he's like, hey, um, you know, I'm talking, I'm going to be talking about this stuff. And I was thinking how cool it would be to ha bring you up on stage. Because some of the things like he, he recorded. Uh, so side note with the story here, he re he uh, when I first we first got in contact again and started connecting and talking again, um, he created an episode of his podcast, the Marketing Secrets podcast. Um, specifically for me, um, and it is called How to Make It Rain. Um, and uh, it, it had been like, um, it had been over a year since uh, he had done that and he wanted to do like a follow-up. He's like, I'm seeing all the things that you're doing. Here's what I would do next, right? Um, and so we, we were gonna, we talked a little bit about that, but he ended up not doing the podcast episode. But he's like, some of the things that I wanted to do in that podcast fit in perfectly with the stuff I'm going to be teaching tomorrow. So I'm thinking about having you, uh, if you would be comfortable with it, come up on stage and we kind of talk through some of your story and I coach you on stage um, and stuff like that. And I was like, of course, I would love to do that. Um, but again, he, he's, he's a, he never knows exactly what he's going to do until he's going to do it, right? But uh, it can't, I, was, I told him I was totally in if he wanted to do it. And so we go through that whole day of training and we're getting ready to break. Um, we are on like the last break before the session ends, right? And um, he he call, calls me up during the break. Uh, he and I and Dave Woodward were talking. He's like, "Do you want to do it? Let's you if if you want to do it, we can do it tonight. We'll do let's announce a special extra session uh, tonight for people that want to come back." And so we did, and it was incredible. I was in front of three hundred of my peers. Um, telling my story about how I got to Funnel Hacking Live and my journey into two, the Two Comic Club X, the stuff that I was talking about last night, right? And um, what's up, Chris Clark? How are you, dude? Hope you're hope you're doing well. I, is Rad a go? Um, so I just had to ask that. <laughs> so um, um, oh, Aaron just listened to that podcast. Um, it was powerful. And um, anyway, so I, it was an amazing experience. I cried on stage in front of 300 people and it was amazing. And like, um, I was well known in the community, but that like just took me to a whole new level. And then that turned into, he turned that interview on stage that was recorded into two episodes of a podcast uh, for the Marketing Secrets podcast called My Conversation with the Friendly Giant. Um, and it was just uh, super fun and it just like took me to a whole new level of visibility within the ClickFunnels community and things like that. Now, I was having a workshop that coincided with that Phoenix event and it was already sold out, but it was incredible having that platform. And again, this wasn't something that I planned for. Um, I was down in Phoenix and I got a Voxer at 11.30 p.m. from my buddy saying, hey, do you want to do this thing? I had this idea. Would you be down if I decide to do it? Um, it wasn't something, it was something that happened by chance, right? Um, it happened um, without proper planning. I stumbled into that success um, of being able to be on stage. I got some cool pictures that people took of me on stage with Russell that I've been able to use in my marketing. And it's, it's just awesome, right? And uh, it got turned into a podcast episode and he has hundreds of thousands of subscribers and you know my story got told in front of a lot of people and it brought a lot of things into my into my life now when you get something an opportunity like that and i'm not trying to say oh look how amazing i am or anything like that that's not what this is about it's about what i did that took it to the next level for me so i had this workshop it was sold out and um, it was sold out before, you know, that thing. And I had people actually sneak in or like just show up because they knew where I was going to be. 
um, and they just handed me cash to to be there, even though they knew that I could only have 50 people there. I ended up, there were probably like 60 or so people that were actually there. <clears throat> um, and it was a lot of fun. And at the end of that, I sold a, a program, uh, a course to help people develop their stories and things like that. And it was it was an amazing day. And I, as a result of being teed up and set up the a couple of days before, um, I'm guaranteed that that's part of the reason why the sales went well with that thing. And I had a, a $10,000 day, right? Um, and it was just like super cool. And I'd never had anything like that. I was like, wow, you know? Um, and so it, I got home and I got sick and I had some challenges come up. But guess what? I didn't let that stop me. I lost some momentum because I was sick, You're like deathly sick almost for two weeks um, after I got home. And, um, but I kept working and I kept using that platform to serve and help others. Um, it wasn't just like, oh cool, that was a lot of fun. Like I wanted to capitalize on it for myself selfishly, but also to be able to serve and reach more people. I had this new platform with tons of people that I was standing in front of. How could I best help and serve them? So I engaged in the communities. I had lots of calls come in after um, the, the podcast went live and all of these things. Um, and I kept working hard um, at it. I didn't get content content with where things were. And guess what happened? I got in, invited to be a roundtable host at Funnel Hacking Live. Funnel Hacking Live is ClickFunnels annual event and 4,500 people were there and I was one of 33 experts that they chose to be able to be a roundtable host to be able to teach and answer questions and give insight and share my journey and my successes with other entrepreneurs. It was crazy. Like I look at some of these other people that have, have like multi $10 million businesses, uh, you know, have had success in getting their two comma club award and get, having million dollar businesses and all that kind of stuff. And then there was me, right? And I was just like, wow, how humbled I was. And then I also got invited to speak on stage um, and be a part of a success panel. So I got to be on stage in front of those 4,500 people, you know, and share my story again. And I helped close business for ClickFunnels and it gave me another bigger platform to be able to share my message on. It was so cool, right? And all of that happened because once I got to the next level and I got some success, I didn't just sit on it and I didn't let it fizzle out. I kept working and, um, uh, pushing ahead and serving and wanting to help more people and it moved to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and then um, I lost all my momentum uh, after Funnel Hacking Live and I put my focus onto a project that ended up not working uh, the way that, that I hoped you know and those kinds of things and I had to restart right so um, you know I'm trying I'm working on getting the success I have success still um, I have that mindset. It's just like getting it back ramped up and uh, growing to the next level, right? And so, um, what's up, Mike? What's up, Theodore? What's up, Lori? Thanks for hopping on. So, um, you know, I was able to have tastes of success, um, but instead of being content with it or being okay with it or just letting it ride, and just see how far that wave would take me with just, by just laying laying back laying laying down and letting it take me take me into the shore, um, you know I was pedaling and I was surfing and I was getting up on the board and doing the work as well, right? Um, so that's one example of something you know, like that that I personally did that I experienced success, but then I was able to take it to the next level by being intentional and uh, putting it to work for me, right? Um, think of, it's kind of funny, some of, some of the coolest or funnest things, uh, successful foods and th stuff were discovered by accident, right? Corn flakes, potato chips were discovered by kitchen accidents, right? And now, you know, they make America, they make humans fat, but they're delicious and, you know, all these, <laughs> all these kinds of things, right? Um, it's one thing if I go in my kitchen and I'm making breakfast or making something and I accidentally discover something and then cover it. What's the difference between me, you know, Nick Fitzgerald in Saratoga Springs, Utah, uh, discovering some cool culinary 
thing by accident and just having it be a family th recipe that maybe I share or make some at family gatherings, but just like the six of us in the Fitzgerald family experience versus cornflakes or potato chips. What did they do? They discovered something that had success. One, it was a failure that became a success, which is kind of cool. But what did they do? They leveraged it and they put it to work for them, right? Um, you know, cornflakes became or uh, are uh, still like a household breakfast staple for a lot of people. Right? And then people coat them with sugar and call them frosted flakes and more people buy them. You know, like it's, it's, there's success that we have and success that is discovered sometimes by chance by some, some corn things falling into some hot oil and, whoosh, and like, ooh, oh my gosh, this is really delicious. Right? Or some thin sliced potatoes that fall in oil and you crunch them. Like it's, it happens by accident sometimes. Unintentional, it gets dropped in your lap. Now, the reason that those became successful is because they applied this new thing, this success, this win, and leveraged it and didn't keep it to themselves, but they used it as, to grow, the put, get the word out, to share it with all these people, and then take it to the fair or, you know, how, however they grow these types of things, grassroots. Um, and then it got picked up and became this huge thing, right? So... Princess Leia's potato chips, exactly. Uh, we're going to put that up there. Any Star Wars reference is going to get on screen. So. Um, so that is like, you know, using our successes, um, even when we stumble upon them, if we want it to last, we have to work with it. We have to leverage it. And I know that sometimes we feel icky doing that, right? Um, I am I am good friends with Russell Brunson, right? I've I've hung out at his house a couple of times. I've it's, I've been in his weight room, and he and Myron Golden and I and Dave Woodward just sat and told stories and talked. And then we went into his pool house, and I got to work, be in his cryo sauna, right? Um, I've got to experience things with him that a lot of people don't. They see him do it on his Instagrams and stuff like that, right? But I've been able to do that. Um, but I've never, I've, I've taken two pictures with Russell since uh, we've reconnected. One was at Funnel Hacking Live 2018 when he saw me on the stage after it was over and he came down and we hugged and we snapped a picture and just talked for a minute. Um, the other one was on the Two Comma Club X Cruise earlier this year. And I've person purposely like not tried to leverage that relationship because I value it, right? Um, but at the same time, I see some of my other friends and this is not a dig at them, but like who they, he's a mentor of them. They're in his coaching program, but they don't know him. He doesn't know them and their personal stories that well, or has met their kids or their wife and, and things like that and had, had them over to his house. Some of these people, right? But they leverage it and they're like, I got to hang out with my friend, Russell Brunson, my run, my mentor, my coach, right? Even though they've not had any one-to-one -one coaching from him like I've been able to have, right? And this isn't, I don't want this to sound all braggy, but like I value that relationship and that's why I haven't tried to leverage it as hard, right? When I see other people doing it and there's nothing wrong with it, right? Um, so it's, it's all the things when you have success or you're around successful people to be able to leverage it to help you grow, right? Now um, this, I wanna, so here's, here's a question. We all know I'm a big Star Wars nerd. If you haven't, uh, where in the heck have you been? I've got a Star Wars shirt on. I've got Darth Vader right here. I've got Stormy the Stormtrooper over there. I've got a lightsaber right here. You know, uh, where have you been, right? Um, but there is there is a viral video that was, I think it's been like three or four years ago now. Um, and it was a person that's lovingly known now as Chewbacca mom. Has anybody ever seen that video? If you have seen the video, let's give me some, some thumbs up, some hearts, and go in the comments and uh, type hashtag Chewbacca mom if you have seen it. I'm gonna grab a drink really quick. So, in 2016, I think it was, uh, 2015, 2016, Chewbacca mom took 
Facebook by storm. She did a Facebook live, um, and it was incredible, hilarious, where she got this mask from Kohl's. Um, it was a Chewbacca mask, and every uh, you know what? Let's let's just watch it together, okay? I'm going to uh, bring it up here. We're gonna watch the Chewbacca mom video together. So get ready for four minutes of laughing your butt off, okay? So here we go. Get, get ready, Lance. Get ready, Aaron. It's awesome. Angela's seen it. She knows the goodness we're about to partake of. So be ready for this. You guys are going to enjoy this. So here, here comes the Chewbacca mom video. Hey, I'm, I'm really excited to share with you something I got. Okay, I went to Kohl's today. I had to make a couple returns. Ah, stuff didn't fit. Surprisingly, it was a little too big. Thank you. I know some of you may be thinking the opposite. Shame. No, no, no shame. It's all love. It's all love. Okay, so here's what I found when I was at Kohl's. And I'd like to say that I bought this for my son that would really, really want it. And let's be honest, he'll probably confiscate it from me. Confiscate? That's a word, right? Okay, so he'll probably take it from me. However, this is mine. Like, when it's said and done, at the end of the day, this is mine that I bought. And I'm going to keep it for my own. You can see it kind of has Star Wars. Oh, you're getting a little hint. Okay, so you want to see what I got? It's so great. I can't wait to show you. Okay. Um, this is part of my, my birthday joy, still uh, rejoicing in my birthday. And so here's what I got. I'm going to take it out of the box and I can't wait to show you. Okay. I'm in a parking lot and people are literally looking at me like crazy. I don't even care. Okay. So here it is. Hold, 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 hold. It may be a little tight. It may be tight on me. I got to undo it just a little bit. Hold, hold. Stay patient, people. Stay patient. This is going to be worth it. I promise. Maybe not. Maybe not. But... <laughs> It's worth it to me, and I had to share with my friends on the internet webs. So here's what <laughs> I'm having trouble getting it. Okay, patient, patient. All right, we're doing good, we're doing good. Okay, so this is what I got. Once again, this is for me, not for Duncan, not for Cadence. I mean, I'll let them play with it. I'm not a bad mom. I'm not a jerk. But in all honesty, at the end of the day, it doesn't go in their toy box. It goes in my room. So here we go. I gotta take off my glasses for it. <laughs> Oh, naturally. Okay, here we go. So, yes! Now watch when my mouth actually moves. <laughs> That's not me making that noise. It's the mask. Here, listen. Okay, now I'm gonna let Chewbacca talk here. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm in tears. I am in tears. Wow. Uh, <laughs> it is the best birthday present ever to myself. Wow. Oh my goodness. Y'all have an incredible day. It's the simple joys. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I dare you to watch that and not laugh. It is impossible. Like Aaron says, 
Call the paramedics. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is hilarious. That is like one of the... that. So I have some stats on that video, okay? That was the most watched um, Facebook live video of 2016. I can't, I can't find current numbers as of right now today, but as of December 8th, 2016, that video that we just watched has had 162 million views. 162 million views. That is like, and so the first two minutes is her talking about stuff, right? He telling a little bit of story how she came across it. And the last two minutes, it's just her laughing her face off and dying and making us die laughing. And it was just so amazing, right? And it was just like, it was incredible. 162 million views. Um, at the end of 2016 it was the most watched video it and that probably all happened like with just in a couple of months it wasn't like over the full 12 months right um just insane a hilarious thing right now um there was another stat i was going to watch up what's up travis thanks for hopping on dude um let me pull this back up so she became an overnight success, right? A, a household name. It was on like Good Morning America. It was on all the TV shows. It was spoofed, all, all of this stuff. And she became an instant celebrity, right? You see these other these viral videos um, that organically happen, just like something hilarious just dropped in her lap and she ran with it, right? And um, it was incredible. And we got a lot of entertainment out of it, you know, all, all of that stuff. And, um, sorry, I'm just bringing up the feed again so I can see who's on. But, like, that video not only made her a celebrity, she got was on Ellen and she was, all these kinds of things. But guess what? She made some money from that. She made some money from that four-minute video of her putting on a kid's Star Wars mask and laughing hysterically for two of the four minutes that she was live and got getting 162 million views. Guess, does anybody get any guesses on what, what's up, dude? What's up, Travis? Any guesses on how much she made from that video? It's, it's crazy. Throw me, throw me a number guess if you know, um, at, while I grab another drink, okay? So, for that four minute Facebook Live video, Chewbacca Mom, uh, was made $420,000. She made $420,000. And it wasn't just, it wasn't Facebook just paying her or something like that. She got um she got a Disney Disney World trip for her family uh, completely paid for. She had people donate money for her kids uh, college funds and and all sorts of stuff. And from that 4-minute video on Facebook Live she got four hundred and twenty thousand dollars out of it for four minutes of pure hilariousness, right? Um, so Aaron took a guess. Lance guessed five thousand. Nope. Aaron guessed one thousand. Angela guessed fifty thousand. And Kablamo, four hundred and twenty thousand dollars is what she made from that. Now. Does everybody know who she is still? Yes. Was Does she make $420,000 a year? Nope. She made that from that one video, but there's nothing else, right? She's back to being mom and doing the things that she did. And uh, she's, you know, she she probably gets, has a, makes a little bit more money because people will like pay her to do something, right? Um, here and there, but it's nowhere at the levels that it was at the height of its mania, right? Now, if you compare that with like the success that we were talking about, like with cornflakes or potato chips or, or things like that, what's the difference? What difference do you guys see? Go in the comments and tell me what difference you see between the success of Chewbacca Mom versus the success of the potato chip. What is the difference? Like I talked about how you leverage you need to leverage success, right? 
And she did, but what happened? The wave came in. Yes, Angela, she was on Ellen, right? Aaron says, Cole's here I come. Um, she was able to get some stuff out of it, but she didn't, she, she leveraged it, yes, but she didn't leverage it into the next thing. Like potato chips, they leveraged it and became uh, well known, right? Um, but then how, how did they uh, get the next wave and keep building and going? There's barbecue flavor chips, there's salt and vinegar, there's ch cheddar and sour cream, there's sour cream and onion, you know. There are all these different flavors to appeal to all the different p things, right? Corn flakes, added a coating of sugar on it and calls it frosted flakes. You know, uh, throw in some, some uh, no, that's bran flakes, but like, ooh, let's do the same thing with bran. Oh, let's throw some raisins in it. Oh, let's throw some dried strawberries. Like, you leverage it and you make adjustments as you go. You don't just go with just plain, if Lay's potato chips, let's say they're original. I, don't, I didn't look up to see who the original creator of the potato chip was. But let's just say that they were. Um... And if they just stayed with just the salted thing. Yeah, they'd probably still be in business. They wouldn't be making as much. They have all these different flavors. And then, like, experiment with these different flavors. They add, like, you know, chicken. They make, like, chicken and waffle ones. And, like, bar or buffalo wing flavored ones. And all these weird combinations. And then they put it out to see what the market says that they like. And depending on what's popular, then they scrap the other ones. And then they start selling this other one. They make adjustments and they changed up the thing. They found the success, but they found a new way to package it and a new way to present it to people. So this is what I'm getting at. Um, and one thing that I will say that face or that um, Chewbacca mom did well and did right. What was the tool she used to get her message out? Facebook Live, you guys, right? <laughs> it's it's a she got 162 million views just on that video, just in Facebook, let alone all the people downloading it or ripping it and sharing it on YouTube and then their own things, right? That thing has been viewed maybe, maybe a billion times by now, right? And so um, she used the right tool to get the word out, right? Um, she just needed to try the next thing if she wanted, if she wanted to go. We as entrepreneurs, we are looking for success. Sometimes we create it and it's born out of our struggles and trials and triumphs. Um, other times it, we stumble across it, right? Um, this thing that I'm working on for you guys that you, I'm going to be talking about here, like came from st stumbling upon it. Basically, to be honest, it was something that I never set out to do um, within my business but it's become the clear path of what I need to be doing. And I came across it almost like by accident, right? Um, so there's a couple of couple of comments that have popped up. I just want to say, um, yes, she hasn't continued moving. Potato chips is continual revenue. Yes, it's something that's consumable and needs replacing. Perfect Lance. Um, and she didn't use it as a springboard to the next great things. Um, And uh, Travis, I don't know how long she'd been doing Facebook Live. 2016, Facebook Live was still pretty new, right? So she might have been doing it here and there, but that was, you know, I don't know what she's done with it since. I'll have to look her up and uh, I can follow up with that. But, you know, she, she it was something that was new and she was going for, um, yes, you're going to have to go and rewatch. We're talking about Chewbacca Mom right now. Um, and I, we watched the video together, so rewatch it and you can laugh with all of us as we watch the Chewbacca mom video. If you haven't seen it, um, get ready to laugh. If you have seen it, get ready to laugh. <laughs> um, that's who we're talking about, Chewbacca mom, for those that just joined us. Um, what's up, Christian? So, um, when you have success, when you discover it, whether, again, it's born out of struggles and everything else or you kind of stumble across it um you need to leverage it if you want it to be continual success if you want it to be fleeting and fade out then you just ride that wave like um i, I liken it to surfing you paddle out there and everything you catch the perfect wave and if you just lay on the board and let it take you in 
you know, it's a fun ride. It's the, the, it's exhilarating. The first time that you catch a real wave, and you're just like, whew. I remember like on a boogie board, the first time I got one that like took me from out in the break all the way into the sand. I was like, that was so fun, right? Um, you can have those moments and then get out of the ocean and go, or you can walk back and try and catch it again, or you can make the experience even better and prolong it by like, you know, learning and working the wave and all that stuff and turning it into a fun ride. Um, and then you get back out there and you take what you learned and you do it again and you try something else and you try going the same way and you try all these kinds of things, right? The same when we have success is that we need to leverage it and put it to work and not just let it fizzle out. If we want it to be continual success that's renewable, that's sustainable, that's scalable, um, as entrepreneurs, that is what we uh, are totally, um, that is what we are totally uh, about and need to be about. And if you're not, there's that, that, that's your choice, but the success, if you're having it right now, isn't going to last if you don't leverage it and take it to the next level, okay? So, um, yes. So, sorry, I'm looking at the comments. Travis says, more waves in San Diego. <laughs> Get the fam down here. Um, we do need to do it. And we need to do that idea that we were talking about with your guys that come for workshops. That would be so fun. Make it a family trip to San Diego. A work, work trip. So, this is this is the formula. I'm not I, like everyone has a different formula to get success, but the formula to continue success is leveraging it to get to the next platform where you can share it and make changes and you know make adjustments or offer a different flavor, right? Um, and then you take that to the next level. And you're always continually wanting to level up the success um, until it gets to a point when it becomes a self-sustaining monster or you bring in a whole team to help th keep things running for you while you go and work on the other stuff, right? Success becomes continual when we continue working at it. If we just, you know, the first time I shoot a three and it goes in and I'm like, sweet, that was awesome. And uh, I never shoot another three because I, I made one already. I'm not going to have success. I'm not going to grow. I'm not going to get better if I don't keep shooting threes. Right? Um, just the same as dunking. The first time that I, the first time, so I was able to dunk. I'll, I'll, we'll end with this story. So in seventh grade in gym class, like it was the cool thing. Everyone tried to see how high they could jump. Um, and the basketball hoop was the standard, right? We all knew that it was 10 feet high and uh, that, you know, if you could touch the rim, that was awesome. Um, people couldn't. So it started with people trying and jumping and getting the net. And some people were just getting the very bottom. But I was getting like halfway up the net, you know, all that kind of stuff. And that went happened over and over when we were waiting before and after class. Um, though that was what we did to pass the time to see who could jump the highest. And um, pretty soon by doing it, guess what? I started jumping higher and higher and higher and I started getting closer and soon I could grab the rim, right? Um, I could get it with my fingers like this and then I could get a grip on it like this and then I could get up on it like this. And then I try, started trying to dunk with a volleyball and guess what? I hung myself on the rim a bunch of times, bong, bong, bong. But then one day I dunked a volleyball. I was like, yes. And then it got to the point where I could dunk a basketball. I could dunk when I was in eighth grade, right? And, um, oh dude, let me finish the story and I'll come to that question, Travis. Um, so, and, you know, by the time my first in-game dunk was when I was in ninth grade, no. Eighth grade, um, with my with an AAU team called the Hornets. No, 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 no. That was my ninth grade year. Sorry, um, but first in game dunk was in in ninth grade as a, as a fourteen year old, right? And then like I kept going and I could do cool dunks and I was like jumping super high. And when I was in my prime, I would get like rim marks on my forearm right here marks from the rim when I dunk because that's how high I was when I'd hit it I'd be like, boom right and it was awesome 
But if I stopped at being able to touch the rim, that's cool. Would I have jumped higher? Yeah, over as I matured, it would have got better. Possibly, without working and exercising those muscles, I wouldn't have got up, you know, built the strength to continue that progression, maybe. Um, but I certainly don't go from dunking a volleyball to getting rim marks on my forearm up by, up by my elbow if I don't take it to the next level and I don't keep pushing, I don't keep jumping. I build on the success that I've had. That's how it becomes long lasting. Now, Travis, to answer your question, um, let's see. So he says, was the friendly giant a knockdown shooter from three? Yes. Yes, I was. And I, uh, I credit that to having played with crappy point guards on my high school team. They would not throw it in the post. They were afraid to turn it over, all that kind of stuff, even though I have a perfect seal where I could just jump up and reverse dunk it and score because I'd have them pinned so deep. Uh, I had to come out on the perimeter to get the ball. So it, it sucked and it was frustrating, but I developed an outside game. And I was a, I was a knockdown three shooter, post up, mid range player. Yeah, I could I could do all that stuff, and it helped as I like in high school. I was a I was a five. I was a center in Division One basketball. I was a five or a power forward, four or five, power forward or center. And then when I got into the semi pros, I was a small forward, power forward. Um, and so those skills at all those levels, I developed them. I I can shoot from range, NBA range, like no no problem. Okay, so there's there's the answer to your question. Um, so there was something that um, Lance Lance did this, uh, said this. Aaron talked about this in this kind of in his live earlier today. Growth from being uncomfortable. Now, when we have success, usually we we we're comfortable, right? We're kind of like, mm -hmm, oh, right. We uh, we feel good about ourselves. We have good self confidence, right? Um, so. If we want to get to that next level of success, we have to put ourselves in discomfort again. I have to keep jumping. I have to get used to, you know, grabbing the rim. And I had to get used to the fact and it wasn't humiliation. It was at first just bonging the, the volleyball on the rim and not going in. I had to get used to that and the, the discomfort and all that kind of stuff. Pushing harder when I jumped and all that kind of, all those things until that went in. And then I got really good where that was constant. It was automatic. And then I got a full-size basketball and I had to get used to the humiliation of falling down on my butt. Because when you, when you hang yourself on the rim dunking a full a basketball, um, you, you usually have a lot of momentum going away one way that stops completely. And you don't have something to grab on to steady yourself and you fall on your butt, right? Um, so we get success and we feel good about it. But if we want to go to the next level, we have to put ourselves back into another uncomfortable situation, right? And when we become ready to dunk on normal, uh, you know, as if it's no big deal, then we uh, start doing tricks and doing other things to challenge us, to help us jump higher, to glide more, to get more hang time, all that stuff, right? So there's a bunch of basketball of analogies for you. Um, Sorry. Um, yes, Travis, do let's let's talk. If you're so, um, Travis is going to be up here. Let's let's give you a tour of the studio, right? Um, and that kind of thing. But um, so, if there's anything I can tell you, success can be forced upon you or dropped in your lap, um, and you can choose to run with it. And go and, and increase and grow and grow and grow. Or you can just take it and be grateful for it and let it run its course. And then go back to being like Chewbacca mom. Just, uh, you know, back to being a mom. Or back to being a dad. Or back to working in that cubicle. Or whatever it might be. Right? Um, it's The choice is ours. If we want lasting success, we need to always be making adjustments and progressing and pushing ourselves further, farther. Now, the best way to start building success or building on the success you've had, do what Chewbacca mom did. Go live, baby. <laughs> and uh, you'll understand why, you know, I've been, I'm so passionate about Facebook lives. 
Um, and that will make more sense um, in the next coming weeks as we go through some stuff. So with that said, go out. Angela, you'll be in Utah. Make sure you drop me a, uh, drop me a message so we can hang out. Um, that's so cool. And um, so if you want success, you need to work at it. And the harder you work, the luckier you get, right? The harder you work, the more opportunities for success come your way. And when they fall into your lap or when you pluck them off the tree or however it is that you get it in your grasp, don't be content with it and let it run its course. Take it to the next level and the next level and the next level. And before you know it, you're dunking from the free throw line like Michael Jordan and wowing everyone and becoming a major icon. Okay? I want that to happen for your business. And it's totally possible. So with that said, thank you, you guys that the, the hung out with me late on a Friday night instead of hanging out with your wives or your husbands or going out to the club or whatever people do on Friday nights. <laughs> um, ooh, I like it. Um, so let's let's do that. I'm, I am down for that. Um, so go out, do good, be good, and remember... It just takes one story. There are lots of ways to deliver it. Some ways are better than others. And we're going to talk about that more uh, in the next couple of weeks. So have an amazing night, you guys. And we'll catch you later. See ya.